what is a certification of identification form or form 186 so this is the form ECFMG uses to verify an applicant's identity ECFMG wants to make sure you are the right person applying for the USMLE exams or applying for the ECFMG certification now who verifies your identity notary cam notary cam provides convenient online access to professionally licensed and certified notaries all you need is to have a laptop with a webcam and access to internet that's all if you want to see the full video on how to submit form 186 step by step you can click the link on the description below if you are new to this channel my name is paul i am uploading videos on us and canadian medical licensing exams every week if you find this video helpful please consider subscribing to my channel like this video and turn on the notification bell icon so that you do not miss any of my new videos now let's get back to the video so we were talking about form 186 now the question is how long will form 186 remain valid it is possible you are currently a medical student you want to apply for the ECFMG certification but maybe you are planning for the USMLE exams after one year or two three years so once form 186 is accepted by the ECFMG it is typically remains valid forever and this is because your identity will never change you might change your medical school but never your identity what is form 183 as an applicant if you want to register for the USMLE exams ECFMG must receive verification of the applicant status as a student enrolled in a medical school or graduate directly from the applicant's medical school there are two ways ECFMG can request this verification and it also depends on the applicant's medical school the first way is medical school official can do it electronically through the ECFMG's medical school web portal status verification program. It is a fast and convenient way to verify the applicant status and this is because it only takes 5 days to complete the whole process. But many medical schools do not participate in this program rather prefer to do it via paper form which is known as form 183. Although it might take some time but nothing you can do. Now, how do you know whether your medical school prefers status verification electronically or via paper form? Well, at the end of online application process, you will be notified if your medical school completes verification electronically. On the other hand, if your medical school prefers via paper form, that is form 183, you will be also provided with the form at the end of the online application process. In addition, a detailed instructions on how to complete and submit the form will also be provided with the form. I have a detailed video on form 183, what should you do with this form? If you have an interest, please click the link in the description below. How can credentials be verified faster with ECFMG? As you know, if you want to apply for the USMLE exam, you must follow a few steps and verifying your credentials is one of the most important steps. The problem is sometimes it takes a long time, particularly if your medical school prefers paper verification. First, let's talk about what happens during verification. Once you send your documents to ECFMG, ECFMG will send those documents back to your medical school for the verification. ECFMG will not use any courier service or any paid service, rather they will use regular mail. You can see here the regular mail uses ship other transports to reach your medical school. If you are lucky enough, it may reach to your medical school in one month or maybe more depending on your country of origin. Once your medical school receives documents, they will take some time to process those documents. Officials will sign, stamp, and return to ECFMG through a return envelope received from the ECFMG. Although the return envelope will be air mail, still it might take some time. Here you can see the median response time is 55 days. And if you are unlucky, it happens, these documents may get lost on its way to your medical school or while returning to ECFMG from your medical school. And you cannot track those documents as there will be no tracking number unfortunately. But there is other way you can do that process faster. And this is through ECFMG's medical school web portal program. This is a web based service for international medical schools. And with this service medical schools can verify credentials of their students and graduates. As it is done electronically the median response time is only 5 days. But the problem is many medical schools do not participate in this program. It does not mean medical schools do not want to participate. They do not know how to participate. If you are still in your medical school, you can let your officials know about that program. School officials can also send email 
and request form at emswpadmin at ecfmd.org. First, let's talk about how many steps are there in the USMLE. There are three steps, step 1, step 2 CK and step 3. You can appear in step 1 and step 2 CK from anywhere in the world where you have the Promatic Center. But you must attempt USMLE step 3 in the USA. So the total number of attempts per step is 4. That means you can appear a maximum 4 times in each step. But you may not take the same examination more than 3 times within a 12 month period. Your fourth attempt must be at least 12 months after your first attempt and at least 6 months after your most recent attempt at that exam. Let me explain what I mean by that. As for example, in the year 2021, someone already appeared 3 times for step 1. The first attempt was in March and the third attempt was in August 21. So that candidate cannot appear for the fourth attempt before March 2022 and it should be at least 6 months from the last attempt in August 21st which would be around the same time, March 22nd. Now, I can't think about fourth attempt. Even anyone has a second attempt, it will be a red flag and very difficult to get a residency position. This is because ECFMG will provide transcript to program directors during residency application and they will be able to see how many attempts a candidate had, what was the score. I'm not saying it is impossible, but it will make your journey very difficult. So prepare well, take your time, appear in practice exams, and make sure you are ready for the exam. Only then appear in STEPS exam. NBME, why it is so important? If you are planning for the USMLE, you must know NBME. So NBME is the National Board of Medical Examiners that develops and manages assessments of healthcare professionals. There are so many functions of NBME that you do not need to know. The only thing you need to know is their self-assessment service. These assessments help students to evaluate their readiness to take the USMLE Step 1, Step 2 CK and Step 3 exams. Let me make it more clear. As you are preparing for the STEPS exam, at some point you will feel you are ready for the exam. But in reality, it might be different. It is always a good idea appearing any kind of licensing exams whenever you are ready. NBME self-assessment services will determine whether you are ready for the exam or not. What other benefit it has? It will also track your progress. You will probably not do well in your first NBME exam, so you need to take multiple, possibly all of the self-assessment tests before your real exam. It will also show you where your weakness was and which particular specialty you need to focus on. This is very important because if you can't work on your weakness, you can't improve. Although step 1 is now pass failed, you can't afford any failed result. Now let's see from where exactly you need to purchase self-assessment. If you Google NBME, this will pop up then click self-assessment, then assessment product and self-assessment services. That's what we are looking for. This will pop up. Scroll down. If you scroll down, you will see comprehensive self-assessment under self-assessment content. If you click on that, there are three options. If you are planning for the step one, then comprehensive basic science and the other two options are for the step two CK and step three. Now, what about the fees? The current fee is 60 US dollars per assessment. If you want to purchase, click here. You need to create an account using My Examinee Portal. Now the format. NBME has two formats to complete those self-assessments. One is standard-based options, which is similar to live testing environment, which means you will have the same time that you would in real exam. The other option is self-based, which will allow you a lot of time to complete the exam. Here the recommendation is a standard-based option because you will get the test of the real exam. How to reprint Form 186 or Form 183 during the USMLE application? As a reminder, Form 186 is Certification of Identification Form and Form 183 is Certification Statement Form which verifies whether you are currently a medical student or a graduate. It is possible during the application you could not download those forms, maybe due to technical issues or whatever the reason is. First question is, can we reprint those documents? Yes, we can reprint. For that, you need to log into interactive web application and you will see a link under print or reprint documents. From here, you can print your documents. Please note that form 183 must be signed by the applicant and then by the authorized officials of your medical school. And that must be returned to ECFMG through mail by the school officials, not by the applicant. This is the mailing address of ECFMG. Now, when you can't reprint your documents, once your form 186 has been accepted by ECFMG, you cannot reprint it and it makes sense. This is same for form 183. 
Once your application for the USMLE has been accepted, you cannot reprint Form 183. Now, if your medical school participates in electronic status verification, it will show you at the end of the application and in that case, no Form 183 will be generated. Still, at any point, if you get stuck, I would encourage you to contact ECFMG. You can call them or email them. If you have a particular question or if you want me to make a video on a particular topic, please comment down below. If you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel, like this video and turn on the notification bell icon so that you do not miss any of my new videos. Thank you so much for watching.